Hallelujah. You know, sometimes it's hard to speak those three words, God, you're so good, because of circumstances, because of how we feel. But if we just look to those testimonies from Caleb, from Samantha, Corey, they saw how really good God is. They really felt the goodness of God, and they shared that with us today, and it really touched my heart because I believe that we need to hear those testimonies from people that have been touched that way from God. Sometimes we can just get a little bit lackadaisical, and we stop to feel God being so good in our lives. We struggle to see God being so good in our lives. But he's always there to do something special in us. He's always there to move us. He's always there to pick us up. Even in those hard times, he's, he's always there, isn't he? He's a good God. But, but sometimes we get live in a mundane world and we fail to see his goodness. There's so much in our own backyard. Everything that they spoke about in West Virginia, we have in our own backyard, don't we? We see the same sickness. We, we see the same depression. We see the same addiction. We see the same hopelessness. We see the same things. We see the same people, different faces, but, but it's the same people. We see that. And some of you are struggling with some of those things yourself. And, and, and there's, there's such a world out there that we have the ability to touch. When we do, you know, I always say when we feel bad, give, man. If we feel bad, give, amen. If you have trouble getting a smile on your face, put a smile on somebody else's face, amen. Help somebody else smile and you'll begin to smile, amen. Help somebody else jump up and down with some excitement and you'll, you'll begin to get that same excitement, amen. Help, help somebody get satisfied with just a bite of some food and you'll, you'll appreciate that food that you get to bite down on and eat a little bit more every single day. You'll appreciate those things that we have so much more so that you'll be able to shout, God, you're so good. You'll be able to feel it, amen, even in those tough times, even in the good times when we fail, to, we look past God, you'll know that he's there and he's so good in your life. He's so good that he puts you right here today. Amen. When lots of people fail to get in the house of God on Sunday morning, he's so good he's placed you right here. And you can be in his presence and hear the word of God and worship when others can't or won't. Amen. When others don't feel that. I hope I can get down into your hearts today. Really, I really do. It's all about the love of God. Amen? It's all about the love of God. God is the architect in our lives. Amen? He's the architect in our lives. And this morning... I want, you to, I want you to get in your, in your spirit how much God loves us and wants to be that person in your life. And some of you, you're already frowning and you're saying, you're saying, I don't know if I can feel that again. I don't know with the circumstance that I see that I can feel that again. Amen? My wife preached on Wednesday about body language. She preached about body language. And what she was saying is that when God's speaking to us, 
when, when people are speaking to us, but especially when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, we, we got to be sitting up straight. We got to have a heart to receive. We got to have a smile on our face. Amen. And, you know, when God speak to, speaks to us, it's going to be difficult to get in and, and get into our spirit when we got a frown on our face. And I'm just trying to tell you, you know, how much our body language and how we position ourselves, how important that is to God. How important it is to you most of all. Amen? You see, sometimes we just look at what we can comprehend. I promise you I'm going somewhere. I promise you that if you allow God, he's going he's to walk you out of here with a smile on your face. He's going to walk you out of here holding hands with you today. And you're going to feel good about this. But you just need to hear some things to prepare yourselves now. Amen? Amen. But the human mind can't comprehend the things of God sometimes. So we fail to see the good. We fail to position ourselves so, th so that we can see in the Spirit. We have to understand that God speaks to us in so many different ways and He has so many different plans for us. He has so much schedule on our schedule, but sometimes we don't work on God's schedule. We just work on our own so we can't comprehend the things that He wants to do in us. Amen? And we got to get over that. As people of God, he speaks directly to us. Amen? He speaks to us. He is the architect of our lives. Amen? And he has a plan. And even if we can't comprehend that plan right now, if we'll just position ourselves, then we'll start to see God's hand in everything that we see throughout the course of our day. Amen? We have to build faith we have to build that faith over time. And, and the group that went down to West Virginia, they saw their faith at work, amen. We have to allow ourselves to see our faith at work sometimes, amen. It's not good enough to just build faith and not test that faith somewhere, amen. We got to step out somewhere and test that faith and see that faith working out in the community, out in, in our family's lives. We want to see that faith working, don't we? Amen. When you go out in the world and you spend a couple dollars on something, you want to see those dollars working for you, don't you? Well, not in this economy. Okay. But we do have a chance to, to fix that. But we want to see, we want to see the things that we are given working. Amen. Amen. Love is the core of God's plan. It's, it's the core. So, you know, coming into the house and loving one another is vital. Amen? Encouraging one another is vital. Picking up one another's faith is vital, isn't it? As we help others build their faith, we build our faith. Amen? Faith doesn't just happen overnight. You don't just get faith on Sunday morning all of a sudden, amen? It's something that we have to build up and we have to expect that we have to participate with building that faith. And folks, here's where it happens in the churches. Sometimes we feel like faith is just going to come down and grab our lives and we can just be lazy and it's going to start to work for us in our lives. But that's not the case, man. We got to work the work and talk the talk, amen? We got to stretch that faith every single day. We're responsible. God gives us the tools. He builds us the right way, amen? God doesn't build lazy people. He doesn't build losers. He builds winners, amen? He builds strong people. He builds strength, amen? He builds the victory, amen? He, he doesn't build anything that isn't worth building. And we, we sometimes struggle to see that in our lives. You see, he created the blueprint of our life. He had a plan before you were even born. I mean, I, I look at these almost every day of the week. I look at blueprints, and last week I was looking at blueprints, and my eyes were getting tired, and God just said, you know, I got one of those for you. I, I, I had a whole set of blueprints 
for your life. Before you were even in your mother's womb, and he, he said, I tell you that in the word of God. Before you were even in your mother's womb, I was starting to work on that site plan. I was deciding where you were going to be born and who you were going to be born to. Amen? And then I, I had the foundation plan and, you know, the, 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 the blueprints for a building project, that's what you do. You, you go in, you prepare the site, and that's what God was doing. And then he says, I'm going to prepare a foundation for you. He said, I'm going to give you my son, Jesus Christ, and he's going to be the foundation in your life. That's my plan for you, is for him to be your foundation. And I'm going to build on something strong, and you're going to walk on something strong. I'm going to give you something strong to walk on. And you're going to have the strength of my son. Amen. And then there's that framing plan. And he says, he says, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to give you wisdom as you grow. You know, he says, I don't just have one page. I got a whole lot of detail for your life. I'm going to do some great things in your life. And then, you know, the electrical and the plumbing. He says, these are the things that are vital to you. I'm going to put those in your body. You're going to have all of the ability to do the things that I've called you to do. Amen. Because, you know what? I don't want you to just look to the last page where we can see that it's built. I want you to go through it step by step. And then I'm going to put the windows and the, the doors in and the, the cabinets. And, and those are the gifts and talents that I'm going to give you. This is what's going to make you successful in your life. This is what's going to make you great, who I want you to be in your life. I'm going to give you all those things. Why? Because I have a picture of you. I have a picture of you. I didn't waste my time with you. Amen? I have something great for you. He says, I'm building a masterpiece with you. This is, this is who you are. He has a blueprint for your life. Amen? But sometimes we fail to stay with the plan. You know, he puts that blueprint in our hearts. He gets the Holy Spirit to speak those things out to you. You know, this is what I, I want you to do today. I want you to build this thing today. This is the detail that you're going to work on today. And then after that, we're going to build this into your life. We're going to build that. But sometimes we think we got to have it all at once. He's going to make us great in one day. Our faith is going to explode. And he's going to use us in mighty ways. And, and, and that's not how it works, especially in this world with the Antichrist spirit all over this world. Amen? We have to pay attention to what it is that he, he wants to do in our lives. And you know, he said, I'm, I'm not making you just do it alone. I'm giving you the word of God. Amen? I'm giving you my word. I'm giving you everything you need to build your faith. Give him glory today. Isn't he a great God? I'm giving you everything you need. Yeah, go ahead. Give him glory. I'm building a masterpiece. You're his masterpiece, folks. You are his masterpiece. You're his chosen people. He might call you peculiar, but it's only because you're not like this world. Amen? You see, with this job that we did... This was a job at Cornell University last year, but with this job that we did, and that's a worldly place, I'll tell you. But with this job, we had this, I had this whole big book that told me how to do this. this. This book is an instruction book, and it tells you how to do this. But the trouble is, this is what the world wants to give you. And sometimes we, this is called a spec book. And sometimes we let the world spec out our day. We let the world spec out our life. And we, we get off the plan. We get pushed off the plan. Amen? That's not what God has for us. We don't have to do it the world's way. Amen? We follow the plan of God in our life. He's the architect in our lives. But sometimes we get pushed off and we forget about the plan. We have something that happens. We, we see people that are doing it another way and we get pushed off and we roll those up. I've got hundreds of these. If anybody ever wants to have a bonfire, 
but we get pushed off of God's plan. We'll roll them up and we'll put it away in a closet until a day when we just cry out to God again. And in the process, we just, we've gone off the path. We've done it our own way. Amen. We let that victory slip. We let the healing slip. We let, we let everything that he wants to provide slip. And we stop the work of God in our lives and we start to build it the way we want. We start to draw up our own plans and build it how we want to do. Amen? Come on, I know I'm speaking to all of us. <laughs> Okay, I'm not just speaking to one of you, I'm speaking to all of us today. You see, back in, I love this story, back in 19, or 1666, the St. James Cathedral burnt down in London. Big, massive cathedral. And it burnt to the ground. And they hired an ar architect named Christopher Wren. He was an up-and-coming young man. They, they, they hired him to rebuild St. James Cathedral. And it took about five years to prepare. They had to, do, they had to draw up the plans. They had to prepare the site. And finally, after five years, they started to actually lay brick and mortar. And one day... Christopher Wren was walking around the project site, and don't think God doesn't walk around and check up on us too, amen? He's walking around the project site, and he sees that there's these three masons that are laying brick, and they're busy building. And he was curious. He observed them for a while, and he watched one guy kind of sitting on the scaffold. He didn't seem too happy. He needed to turn his frown upside down, amen. But he was laying brick. He was doing what he was supposed to do. Then he, he saw this other guy over on a, another section of the building. He's laying up brick and he watched him. And you know, this guy, this guy was doing it a little bit more efficient than the first guy. And then he saw this other guy that caught his eye. This guy was standing up. His, his chest was out. He, was, he, he appeared to be excited about what he was doing, you know. And he's there, he's taking the mortar and laying it on, setting the brick in there, scraping it, smiling, maybe even singing a little bit. So he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk over and check out these guys and talk to them and their purpose. And that's what he wanted to do. What's your purpose here? He asked the first guy and the first guy says, you know, I'm here because I need to make money for my family. I need to feed my family, and I need to put a house over their head. Now, that's a good reason to work. Amen. He went to the second guy. He said, you know, what are you doing here? What is, what is motivating? He said, I, I'm a mason. This is what I do for a living. I make a good living doing it, but this is who I am. I'm a mason. And then the third guy, he goes over. He says, what are you doing here? What's your purpose? He says, I'm building a cathedral. He says, I'm building something for the glory of God. Amen. He says, while I'm building for the glory of God, I'm making money for my family. He says, I'm a mason and I'm proud of it. But more than anything else, I, I'm here building this thing, not for man. This is not for man's sake what I'm doing here today. This is for God's sake. Amen. God called me to use my gifts and talents. And this is what I'm doing. And he was proud of, of who he was and, and how he was doing it. He had a different mentality, amen? This man had a bigger picture. His day was better than the other guy's days, amen? He was building his faith, even, even throughout the course of his day and his mundane job that the other guys thought it was. He, was. he was busy doing something greater than himself. He was proud, amen? He saw God's plan. He saw God's plan, and he trusted God's plan. Amen? He knew it wasn't for him. He saw the end result. Amen?
He saw the end result. And some of you folks that went to West Virginia, you've seen the end result of what can happen when you just step out of your comfort zone for just a few minutes and trust God and trust that he's going to give you what you need to fulfill the plan for that very moment. Amen? So many times we walk by the moments that God gives us. And we don't trust that he can help us to seize that moment. Amen? To seize it and, and help it to bring glory to him and to help somebody else and to build our faith. Build our faith. Amen? He knew the architect. This man knew the architect of his life. And he trusted his plan. He trusted the blueprints. He didn't get off the plan. He didn't get pushed off. He stayed there. And even on the hard days, you and I, even on those hard days, we can take and do it brick by brick. Amen? Amen. We can take and, and pick up that brick and we can lay that brick and we can put it in place. I know I got at least one or two masons in the house today so they understand it can get hard to lay brick, especially when you don't have gloves on. You can get callous hands. It's, it can be struggle. Your hands dry out. But you know what? You're doing, you're going through your day, you're doing it for God. You're trusting the plan of God in your life, amen? You're not ditching the plans. Every day counts, and you're building your faith. The things that you do, you're doing for Him, amen? Yes, you got to take care of your family. Yes, you have a responsibility to some worldly things. But what you do, you're doing for Him, amen? And that's where you find true Life. Amen? Oh, come on now. I'm going to preach to myself for a while. I'm going to turn my back on you guys and preach to myself. That's where you find true life. Amen? We can't find it in the worldly things. We can't find it in the spec. We can't roll up God's plan and expect that we're going to find the, God's victory. If he created us, then we have to do it his way and not our way. Amen? Amen. Amen. I hope the word helps you this morning. I hope it helps you to see the things that you do a little bit differently. I hope that as we go through those mundane things in our daily lives that we can see how important they, that we can see God's detail in those things. Amen? That we can say, okay, God, this is, this is going to be a hard thing. I had to do something hard this week. I, I had to do something that made me very sad. But it wasn't wrong. Okay? How many times we have to go through our lives and we got to do something that we feel might be wrong, but it's really not wrong. It's really written on God's plan for us. Amen? We cannot be fooled by this world and let the world tell us that right is wrong and wrong is right. Amen? We have to have the discernment and pay attention to God's plan. If I went up and built this roof the way I wanted it to, I would never have gotten paid. Never. I would have got thrown off the job or walked off the job because I didn't get paid. Amen? There's a requirement, not that we work for God to get paid, but if we want to see the victory, if we want to see the strength and all that, then we have to stay with the plan of God. Amen? Amen? Even with the difficulties, even with the roadblocks, even with all those things, you start to believe more. I believe that God's going to touch this community. Amen? I believe he's going to fill this church up with people that are pushing in to him. I believe that he's going to change things. I, I believe we're going to see the people change the way these people saw. I believe your family's going to be saved. I believe all that. And I've been saying it for years and we've gone through some hard times. But because of that, I believe it now more than ever. Amen? Because through those hard times, my faith in God has increased. Amen? My trust in him has increased and that's the way we got to see those things 
That's the way we got to see those things and, and work through them and do them for the glory of God. Amen. I'm talking to every one of you. Your age doesn't matter. So don't you ever use that for an excuse. Amen. What sex you add, that don't matter. Your, your education, that don't matter. You can see, I, I made it to ninth grade. That don't matter. Amen. None of that stuff matters because here is the plan. Here is the plan. Amen. One of the characteristics of this world is that people are moved by circumstance and not God in those circumstances. Amen. They get pushed off the plan. Your view of God determines your view of life. It determines whether you're able to build faith, your view of God, if you can see God in the details of things. If you can see God in the midst of struggle, he never made a promise saying, you're not going to struggle. He never made any of those promises, but if you can believe the promises that he has made in the midst of what we walk through today, then you will build the faith that you need in your life to overcome to be victorious, amen, to be strong, and to be who God called you to be, amen? He's the architect, he's the creator, he's the sustainer, he has to be the governing principle in our life, amen? The government is not our governing principle, amen? And, and the world has fooled a lot of people saying that we need the government more than we need God, amen? It's time to set that aside and realize that that justice from the pit of hell, amen? Our constitution says that, that we are the governing people, that, that we, we provide a government that is run by the people. And the people aren't run by the government. Amen? Amen. Amen. But we are, we are people of God. We, we are people of God. Amen? Some people this 4th of July were letting off fireworks and doing celebrating all kinds of things because they're celebrating their independence from God. Nothing to do with our country. Their independence from God. Amen. We got to celebrate God in our life every single day. Amen. He's right, reminding you today that his plans are not insignificant for you. Someone say amen. amen. His plans are not insignificant. Some of your plans are deeper than this. Deeper than mine. But you just don't know it. Some, some of y'all are, are supposed to be out doing missionary work overseas. Some of y'all are supposed to be overseeing large groups of people going out and doing. Some of y'all are supposed to be CEOs in, in some businesses, but you don't see that in your life and, and you've never tried to attain that in your life because you forgot the plan of God for yourselves. You're not insignificant. The plan's aren't cheap. Amen? Amen. He gave his son. He gave his son. It, it costs something. Amen? They're not cheap. It, it requires faith to see the plan of God in your life. Faith. Building faith. One with another. Building faith with Jesus. Establishing some things in your life. Establishing some principles. Establishing some non-negotiables. Establishing your relationship time with Jesus Christ so you know the plan. Whether you believe in God, whether you trust Him right now, it does not matter. Your life still is not your own. And you're never going to find what you're looking for until you look to Jesus Christ. You're never going to be fulfilled in what you do until you have this. And they've proven that. There's plenty of testimony of all the people that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in their lives. That their money doesn't help them. That their prestige, their stage doesn't help them. Amen. 
We got a president that was popular at one time. And now he's not. And now he's struggling with a human body just like we all will at some point in our lives. Amen? The same thing's happening with, with Hollywood. The same thing's happen with people in positions. If we don't know God, then we don't know the plan for our lives. Amen? He loves you so much, and he says, you're mine. And I, and I spent all this time putting this together for you. Why won't you just open them up and look at them sometimes? Why won't you respond? It's not hard work. I never create anything too hard for you. He loves you so much. In Genesis 22, I'm getting into the word now, so. In Genesis 22, God speaks to Abraham. And he asks Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. And this seems like a really strange thing to be recorded in the Bible. Remember, we don't always understand the things of God and how he works. Amen. This wasn't a test to build faith. It was a test for God to reveal some faith. Amen. You see, God had spent a lot of years building Abraham slowly. Just like he's building you and I. All right? He's building us slowly, day by day, hour by hour, from one trouble to another, from one circumstance to another, from one victory to another, amen, from one child to another, from one grandbaby. He's building us slowly and over time. You see, he built Abraham into this great man of faith. He was called the father of faith. It says, then he said, to Abraham, take, your, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning. He, he saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him. And Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering, and he arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men that he took with him, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So, so here they are going up the mountain. Abraham's being faithful to what God had told him to do. And he packed all that, all that wood up. He packed the fire up. He brought some people. And he tells the people that he brought with him to stay back. You know what he didn't say? He didn't say that I'll be coming back alone. He said, the lad and I will be coming back down and we'll meet you back down here. Amen? It says that Abraham built the altar he bound his son up and he was prepared to go all the way. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? I got one son. I can't imagine, but remember, I can't, I can't understand the things of God, but I can't imagine me taking my son and going up the mountain knowing that God wanted me to sacrifice my son, whom I love very much. Amen? But then I thought about what is it that I do need to sacrifice if I'm going up that mountain. What is it that God would want me to sacrifice as I'm going up that mountain? Other than my son. Amen? Is there something else that I could give besides my son? And Abraham knew what he had to do. But Abraham had a special bond with God. And he knew what God had promised him. If you know anything about Abraham, God said, I will make you a father of many nations. He said, 
when you get down, when you get out, he says, I want you to look at the plans I have for you, Abraham. Here's what you can look at, just so you know how much I love you and how much I, tr how much I want you to trust my promise. Look up in the sky and see all the stars that are in my sky. That's, you're going to have descendants like the stars in the sky. Amen? Amen. So there he is. He takes his son, Isaac, and he, he lays out the wood. He gets up there. And Isaac is wondering, where's the sacrifice? He'd done that with, with Abraham on many times. They'd gone up and they made an altar and they built the altar and they, they set the, 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 the altar on fire, but they, they burn a sacrifice of a lamb. But Abraham knew they didn't have, or Isaac knew they didn't have a lamb. He said, where's the sacrifice, Dad? And he said, God will provide. He said, God will provide. So here they are in this intense moment. And, and Abraham ties his son up, Isaac, to the altar. And he, he grabs his knife and he lifts his knife over his head. And then an angel comes and says, do the child no harm. God's providing a sacrifice, and he looks over in the thicket, and there's a ram caught in the thicket. And he's able to go over, free his son, and go over and sacrifice that ram on that altar that day. Amen? Even in the intensity of that moment, his faith in God was unwavering. He knew that God had some blueprints, some plans for his life. Amen. And he trusted him that he would be right there, the father of many nations. And Abraham, or Isaac, was his son. He knew he needed the son to be the father of many nations. So he trusted that God would provide a sacrifice. Amen. He knew that when he demonstrated great faith, even in that moment, and I know we can't imagine killing a human being and sacrificing it, but in that moment, he knew that if he, if he demonstrated that faith, that God would emerge in that moment. Amen? And that's what we need to get into our spirit, into our lives, is knowing that when we use great faith in a hard situation, no matter what you're going through, in that situation, in that time, if you'll demonstrate the faith that he wants you to demonstrate that God will emerge in that situation, that circumstance will not overcome you. Amen? I know that about us, too. Amen. I know the things that God has spoken over you. I know the things that he's spoken over our house. And I, and I trust what he's done. Amen. I know I trust him to be the architect of my life. And I know that I do mess up. I, I know that sometimes in my situation I, I set those plans aside and I do try to do it my own way. But he always pulls me back in and he's the one that provides the answer. Amen? Amen. You see, on these plans, on these plans, you'll see architect stamps all over. You'll see the structural engineer on that. You'll, you'll see the main architect. You'll see the structural engineer. You'll see the plumbing guy. You'll see the site guy. You'll see the abatement guy. You know what abatement means? Getting rid of some things that are poison. Amen. You'll see him there too. But you know what we see? We see Jehovah Jireh puts a stamp on those plans. Amen. We see Jehovah Nisi there. He puts his stamp on that plan. Amen. We see Jehovah Shalom. He puts his stamp on that plan. Amen. We see Jehovah Rapha. He puts his stamp on that plan. Amen. He stamps his plans. He does not leave his name off his plans. He believes so much or he trusts that we'll believe so much that we'll trust the stamp that he's put on our lives. Amen. Amen. He's the architect of our lives and we have to believe that. We have to trust him and build our faith and trust what we believe and know. Then the Lord said to Abraham, 
and now I know. You see, Abraham had walked with the Lord for years. And today, the Lord knew that God was the final say in Abraham's life. Amen? Is God the final say in your life? Amen? Are the decisions that you make, do they line up with God? Is he the final say in the things that you do, in the things that you shout, in the actions that you take? Is, is God the final say? Amen? You see, that's when we demonstrate faith. And that's when we see God move in our lives. We have to make him the final say in our lives. But folks, faith is a process. It's measured over a period of time and it increases as time moves on. And we have to understand that. Amen? There's many people in this world that will not persevere. They will not stick to it. Amen? There's, there's people that will come in here and get saved, give their life to Christ, and they think that everything gets dumped on them in one day. And they'll walk away because they'll have no faith. Faith is built over a period of time. I said it earlier. I'll say it again. Okay? Every single day of our lives count. We're building faith every single day. The church must be consistent in the building up of our faith. Amen? Amen. We can't get it all right now. That doesn't build trust. Right? That doesn't build trust. It doesn't build the faith. And, and some people might seem like they're getting everything that they want, but their pockets are still empty. Well, I said that wrong. They might have something in their pockets, but their spiritual pockets are empty. Amen? So think about that scenario again. As Abraham's tying up his son, Isaac, Isaac asks, but father... Where's the sacrifice? And he says to his son, our God will provide. It's in our Bible, right? Our God will provide. And I'm winding down. Okay. It's going to be like the fireworks you watched the other night. All right. You all sat through the first part of the fireworks and you said, oh, oh, oh. wish they'd get to the finale. Yeah. Well, then the finale comes and y'all are paying attention. You're all looking up and clapping. Yeah, finale. So there's a law of Bible interpretation. It's called the law of first mention. Anybody ever hear of that? It's the first time that a spiritual principle is spoken. And when somebody puts it into the atmosphere you begin to see it working everywhere around you. Amen? We talked about it last week. Prophesy over dead bones. Amen? We talked about prophesying and speaking over people. Paul spoke it in Thessalonians. He said, my God shall supply all your riches and needs. Amen? My God shall supply. Y'all ought to be getting excited. Come on now, help me out with this. This is the grand finale, amen? Are you ready? You're going to be walking out of here in a few minutes. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to give you a, a future and hope. That's a promise. It's right here. It's on page Jeremiah 29, 11. amen? For I, Lord God, am your shield. I will bestow favor and honor. No good thing will I withhold from those who walk upright and with me. Amen. Having the faith and trust in God. He said, I will not withhold anything from you. You can believe it. It's in the word. God wants you to know that when Abraham said, our God will provide that Abraham knew that we were coming along a little bit later on. And when he said, our God will provide, he knew there was going to be some people that needed to hear that. Our God will supply. He will provide. And that's who he's talking to today. He wants you to know that I will provide. I'm a God who provides. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 41.10 says, fear not. For I am with you. 
Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This is what he's doing today. He's, he's emphasizing his hand on your life. Amen. He's emphasizing his hand. He's emphasizing that he will provide. I've got to slow down. You're saying, go, go, go. And I'm saying, I'm going too fast. I got to slow, slow, slow. You got to find better jokes too. <laughs> Amen. He says, my hand creates. Indeed, my hand has laid the foundations of the earth. My right hand has stretched out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. He wants to create some things in your life. Amen. We just need to open our eyes and, and open our spiritual mindset, open our spirit up to the things that God wants to create in our life. He says, my hand preserves with a strong hand and with an outstretched arm. My mercy endures forever. Amen. He's telling you again, forever, that means eternity. You weren't created for this world. You were created for heaven. But as you walk through this world, I am with you. Amen. I will be with you. Amen. He's saying, my hand delivers. I will deliver you from the hand of your enemies and from those who persecute you. Amen. I will prepare a table for you among your enemies. Amen. That means as we go down, we're going down to her place. So we're, as we go down and we plop ourselves, the, the people of God, down there between Baldwin Street and Lake Street, that means that God's going to move in a mighty way. Amen. That means that we're going to see deliverance moving amongst people. Amen. That means we're going to see people getting free. But we got to believe it. We got to trust that it's true. We got to trust that it's in here. And right there it is. Page 32. It's in the Word of God. Amen? And the Word of God has to inspire us and give us the strength to go ahead and, and do that and trust that when we do, we're going to see God move. Amen. Amen? He says, my hand protects. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by me and he delights in my way. Though he may fall, he shall not be cast down. I will uphold him with my hand. Amen? Step by step, day by day, trouble by trouble. He says, oh, you may fall sometimes, but I'm there. I'll pick you up. I will uphold you. Amen. I'm the Lord your God, and I have a plan for you, and these plans are for eternity. Amen. Those plans never die. We might want to burn them up in the bonfire, but those plans never die. He will reach down and he will pull us out of anything that we put ourselves into. Amen. He says, my hands provide with an open hand. I satisfy the desires of every living thing. And folks, we got to get this. Sometimes we are the open hand of God. Amen. Sometimes he uses us to help to provide to some people. Amen. He uses us to provide for our family. So why wouldn't he use us to provide for his sons and daughters? Amen. His hand provides. He's there for us. When we walk in faith, he's there. He provides. Amen. His hand brings healing and miracles. He, Jesus said, as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out the demons. Amen. There's lots of work to do, folks. And until we understand that it's right here in the plan of God for us, that we'll never be able to get that work done. He's saying, as you go, he says right here, I told you on page three that you're to go after I build you and make you a masterpiece. You're to go. Amen. You're to trust me. You're to walk out in faith and go and believe that when you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. Amen. That when you, when you touch and cl you'll cleanse the lepers. Amen. The people that lives has fallen apart. The people that lives are they're falling off. They're, they, feel, they feel like they're no good to society. They're outcasts. You'll cleanse the lepers. Amen. You build your faith. You build your faith. Amen. His hands bring victory. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained the victory. Amen.
We got to walk as people of victory. Amen? Huh? <laughs> Isaiah 59 1 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. And that settles it right there, folks. His hand can reach anywhere. Amen? His hand can reach anywhere. You got some dreams that you've taken off the table? His hand can reach down and awaken those dreams again. His hand can reach down and save that child. His hand can reach down. Happy birthday, honey. Happy birthday. You're beautiful. His hand can reach down and touch any spot in your life. Touch anybody you care about and love. Touch any situation in any community. His hand has not been shortened. Amen? If there's a detachment, if there's a distance, it's because of the people. Right? His hand's still there. It's because I backed away. I backed away from the hand of God. Amen? Numbers eleven twenty three says, And the Lord said to Moses, Has the Lord's arm been shortened? You see, Moses was having a little difficulty trusting God right there. Has my power diminished? Am I a different God than the one that brought you out of Egypt? Have you forgotten the things that I... Am I somebody different that Ray put the manna from heaven? I fed you from heaven? Amen? He's asking us the same question today. Has my arm been shortened? And here's where you got to get out of that human mindset. Has my arm been shortened? Am I not the same God? Amen? You see, Moses was looking at things from a personal mindset, from a human mindset, and not from God's mindset. And right there was what God was trying to say. Moses, you're looking at this thing all wrong, man. My arm is the same. I just split that Red Sea for you 15 minutes ago. You walked through there on dry ground. You saw what I can do. I am the same God today, and he's saying it to us today. I'm the same God that split the Red Sea for Moses. I'm the same God. I sent my son, Jesus Christ. He, he died on a cross, and he was resurrected. I resurrected my son. I'm the same God. Amen. I've, I've, I've caused you to experience miracles in your life. I've, I've caused you to experience wonderful things in your life. But even after all that, sometimes you fail to see that I am the same God. We have to catapult our faith together. We have to look for God in every situation. Amen. We have to close the gap. Amen. Remember the scripture Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay? What do you think that meant? A Corvette? A ribeye? A house with a picket fence? No. It's the stamp of God. It's whatever God has planned for you. He, he, doesn't, he has prosperity planned for each and every one of us. Okay? He doesn't have constant struggle. He doesn't have constant pain for each and every one of us scheduled. Amen? Seek ye first. We'll find Jehovah Jireh. We'll, jo we'll find peace, Jehovah Shalom. We'll find healing, Jehovah Rapha. Amen? We'll, we'll find protection, Jehovah Nisi. All of those things. Are you thirsty for him? Does your spirit long for him? Is he first? You can't just stumble on a great relationship with God. You'll, you'll keep stumbling over this. You'll, you'll keep stumbling over God's plan. You'll trip. All the kids, they come in here, their knees are all bruised all the time. Got scabs on their knees, don't they? With my grandkids, it was their foreheads. 
They always had scabs on their foreheads because they, they, they'd be running so fast and they had big heads. They'd be running so fast and their head would take them out of balance and the next thing you know, they trip, fall, bam, right on their head. That was a little better, right? If you want a powerful relationship with God, we have to reject the wrong and embrace the right. Amen. We have to deny access to the wrong people. Amen. Somebody say amen. We have to deny access to the wrong beliefs. Amen. We have to deny access to the wrong ideas. Amen. I met a guy this week and he's from Israel. So... I thought, never mind, I'm not going to go there. He's a nice guy. I hope I can have a conversation with him again. But I found out he doesn't have Jewish heritage in him. He's got some other type of belief. But I hope we can have, continue to have the conversation. Amen? Maybe you're in a pit for a minute. Don't get comfortable there. Get in God's hand. Amen? Change your thinking. Change your position. Change your expectations. Amen? Start building your testimony with God. That's, that's how Abraham did it. Him and God had this thing going. He says, you trust me, I'll do this. And they got a testimony together. It wasn't just Abraham's testimony, it was God's too. You trust me, I'll do this. Amen? You trust me, I'll do this. You trust me along the way. You trust me, Abraham, and you and I start building that testimony between you and God. Amen. Even if it's the little things in the day, start building that testimony with him. But you got to seek him fervently. Amen. You got to, you got to pray more. Some of you are struggling in prayer. Some of you are struggling in the Word. You have to get in there. You have to cause yourself to do it. That's how you build the faith. Amen? You build faith that way. You have to trust more. Step out a little bit. Step out and give Him an opportunity to show you. Step out and give Him an opportunity to make that thing, that situation, what He wants it to be. Amen? Not what we think it ought to be. Start trusting what He has planned for you. Amen? Remember, he builds masterpieces. He builds masterpieces. He doesn't build shacks. Some of you all got a shack mindset. You do. Some of you, I should close here if I knew what was good because here's where people get offended. But some of you all got a shack mindset. Your house needs to be remodeled. But you you like the old stuff. The stuff that you put there. God never put it there. You get happy down there. Your old stained up recliner. Right? You know, you got the remote there with the, it's all broke up. You got it hold together with tape. Some of you got some pea green bathroom fixtures, shag carpet. You refuse to let God do something new. You refuse to let him spruce up your house. You refuse to let him spruce up your life. Val's quieted me on the front row, so I better stop. (laughs) She usually gives me the cue when it's time to stop. But you guys do too. You do too. Remember, Jeremy, it says, don't be afraid of their faces. Okay? Don't be afraid of their faces. We have beautiful faces. We do. I love your faces. I love your faces. And I know what a plan he has for each and every one of us. Amen? And I believe it. And that's why I'm willing to stick my neck out and do something that I'm not comfortable doing all the time too. Because I love you, care about you. That's why if you get a text from me and it might seem a little bit harsh, 
But as a shepherd, man, I got I to gotta draw you back, amen? I got to attack the point in your life that's causing you to pull back, right? It's because I love you, not because I want to offend you, okay? All right. I'm not going to ask who's gotten texts, but I got some plans here. I got a list. I've been watching. Dan, you're getting a text tomorrow. Like five. If you, if Camille, if you have any suggestions, you let me know. I'll take. I'll send. I'll send him some texts too. Okay. It's from your pastor, not from your wife. Okay. No. God wants every detail. He wants your marriage. He wants your money. He wants your personality, who you are. He, 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 he wants you to, to grow up in Christ. He, he, he wants everything. He wants everything. Why? Not because he's greedy. He gives you the choice, but because he knows what's better for us. Right? He knows what's good for us. And he knows what it'll do for you, even when you don't. Some of y'all need to go get a flat screen TV instead of looking at that console from the 1970s RCA. Motorola. Yep. Don't give me that look, Redner. Okay? Oh my, look at that. It's 10 of noon. Well, take it up with Jesus. Oh, he did say, feed my sheep. So, all right. I love you all. No fear here. I have the Holy Ghost. I was created for this time. I know exactly what to do. And I know how to do it. I'm not afraid. I'm not lost. I'm not confused. I'm God-led. And I'm God-driven. Amen. Now listen. Next Saturday, we're going down Elevate Elmira. We're going down to Grove Park between 2 and 5. There's going to be another church there. And they're going to be there between noon and 2.30. And they're going to be giving away clothes. And they're going to be probably doing some of the things that we're doing. Grove Park double booked. But how many know that's okay? Yeah. Okay? We'll come in and we'll take over for them. And we'll, and we'll preach. We'll feed. We're going to set up a prayer tent. We're going to set up a place where people can get Bibles and and Donnie called and said, I got 1,200 daily, our daily breads. Can, can I hand those out? I said, yes, of course. Um, so we're going to go down and we're going we're gonna to love on the community. And we're going to share with them just like you folks did in West Virginia this week. So I'm encouraging you to step out of your comfort zones. Find a little time. It's three hours. Um, four if you want to set up and, and help dismantle or just a couple hours but I'm encouraging you all to come out so that we can catapult and build our faith together amen Tony Tony was just ordained a couple weeks ago and he's going to go down there and they clap when I said your name you know they're like they clap when I say I'm ready to go He's going <laughs> he's gonna to preach um, down there next. Uh, um, Ray, Ray, are you in here? Where are you? He's downstairs. Ray's going to bring over um, the bulldog wagon, and he's going to make hot dogs. And, and, you know, you can just be a part of handing out Bibles, or, or if you want to be a part of praying, um, just come down there and let people see your smiling face. Amen? Amen. Now, that's going, to be, that's going to be one that's going to be kind of kicked back, laid back. But is it the month of August, right, when we're going down to, uh, is it Blanford? No. It's, um, um, it's, it's down, 
li, what's it called down there? Which no. Li, 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 no. Nope. Down between Baldwin Street. Lib, Libertad. Yeah, that's what it is. We're going down there. Amen. We're going we're gonna to try and do our best to set up in that park right between there and, and the old Ernie Davis. And that area, those people down there are really in a bad way. We have everything here to keep us busy as Christians. Um, we're going to go down there. We're going to be we're going to be fighting some demons down there. I'm, I'm just here to tell you, we're going we're gonna to go down there and we're going we're gonna to preach deliverance and helping people. Amen. How many know that some people need to be helped, but they need to be delivered before we can actually help them? Amen. Sometimes God delivers over time. That's, that's okay too. We need time sometimes. When are we doing the um, church in the park over here? End of September, it, we're going to go up here in this park and wake up Elmira Heights, and we're going to have Sunday service up in that park up here, Oak Ridge Park. It's going to be a blast. We did it a couple years ago. It was awesome. We're going to go up there, set up praise and worship, and have a, 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 a great time, invite everybody from Elmira Heights to that. And then we are going down to Blanford in um, September, right? And we're going to, and this is going to be really fun. We're going to go down Blanford Park. You got Eastgate, Dewitzburg, and we're going to we're going to knock on every door there and invite them to come out and and just have an experience with some people that want to point to Jesus. Amen. So we got a lot planned, and there's there's always work for you to do. And I know you can't tell me that it's not in here. It's in there, right? It's in there. Amen. I got you. From now on, it's in there. Why? It's in here. Amen. Amen. All right, listen, I love you. I praise you. Thank you for being patient with me for the last few minutes and, and um, while your stomach's growling. And, um, I'm going to keep you. I'm going to keep you another half hour. <laughs> Well, sometimes he, he upholds us with his righteous right hand. So we have grace and mercy for that. Amen. Um, we love you all. We appreciate you. Be safe. Read your Bible. Pray more so you can be more. Amen. Give Jesus a hand. Guys.